Shalom and praise the Lord. Once again, we welcome you to another Sunday celebration service under the auspices of Crisco City Church. And from wherever you are watching us, listening to us this day, we welcome you to feel at the feet of Jesus Christ as we spend some time in prayer. We love you, we appreciate you, and we thank God for each one of you. And so before we pray this morning, we just want to read a scripture from the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 10. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 10. The Bible says, On the 23rd day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for the good that the Lord had done for David, for Solomon, and for his people Israel. And so we just want to pray. The word that is uh, coming to my heart this day is rest. I believe God wants us to enjoy the rest that he has given unto us. And so many of us, despite God having given us the opportunity to enter into his rest, we are still caught up with so many things that are not uh, helping us in uh, serving uh, the Lord and ministering unto him. And so the background of this scripture we all know 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 13, 14, if my people are called by my name. But uh, the King, uh, King Solomon is preparing the Israelites before the Lord speaks to them. And so what does he do? God commands the King, Sol uh, King Solomon to order the people to go back to their tents. In other words, to go back to their houses. And soon after, as they enter their rest as it were, God begins to speak some of the most profound uh, words that remain relevant up to this day. And that's where he says, verse 13, when I shut up the heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. And so we have gone through a period or we are in a season where uh, many a times we encourage to stay at home, clean your hands, sanitize as it were, keep social distance and all that. And we can see the people were told to go back to their tents and as they went back to their tents or to their homes, the Lord was able to speak to them. In other words, they were resting from their labors. They had just finished doing the tent, uh, the, the temple, and now the king was telling them to go and rest. And I know we've been laboring in the area of prayer, and God wants us to understand that he has prepared a rest for us, and we are going to see the fruit of that which we have been praying. And so I want us to join in in prayer this morning and just trust God that indeed we are going to wait upon him and we are going to enjoy his rest, that rest that he has set for us as the children of God. God does not want us to be anxious about anything. He tells us by prayer and supplication, let us make our requests known unto him. And therefore, with the challenges we are going through, with um, um, things that are happening, God has assured us of his rest. And therefore, we want to trust God that we are going to settle down and allow his rest to have its effect upon our lives. So wherever you are this day, just join me as we take time to pray together before we start our service today. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you, we adore you, this day King of glory, for the way you continue to minister to us, O God. We thank you that you are calling us to remain in your rest, O God. And for those of us who might have left for one way or another, and we are anxious, we are um, uh, in one or another unsettled in our walk with you, King of Glory, you are reminding us that you have been with us throughout the year, King of Glory, even in this turbulent season. Father, you have been with us and you assure us of your rest. Help us, King of Glory, not to be anxious, O God, not to be unsettled, my Father, but we shall remain confident that you who has called us, O God, is faithful and you are able to carry out that which you have promised, King of Glory, and therefore want to remain in your rest, O God, where you will be able to speak to us. We shall hear that which you are telling us in this season, 
And Father, we shall walk in obedience according to your word, to the glory and honor of your holy name. Father, after Solomon sent the people into their homes, into their tents, Lord, you are able to speak a profound word. Help us, O God, that even in this season, as we remain home, as we... Uh, deal uh, uh, careful with people, King of Glory. We shall hear that which you're speaking to us in this season, King of Glory, and that, Father, in turn, we shall be a blessing to many others, King of Glory. We thank you and we bless you. I speak your rest upon your children, upon your people in this season, King of Glory. Father, we shall not be anxious about the political climate in this nation. We shall not be anxious about the pandemic in this nation, O oh God, but we shall lift everything into your able hands, King of glory, because you have assured us of your rest, O God. And we shall be rested upon Jehovah, because we know everything is in your hands, and that, Lord, you are in control, and nothing takes you by surprise. Therefore, we thank you and we bless you, because your people shall enter into your rest. And we commit the service today into your able hands, King of glory. May you minister to your people in a very special way, O God, that, Father, you shall touch them at their very points of need, and in their areas, O oh God, where they desperately need you, King of glory, may you come through for them, that as we go through the service this day, we shall celebrate the God of love. We shall celebrate the living God, because you have brought us into your rest. And Lord, you will speak to us, you will minister to us very clearly. And Father and our God, we shall be strengthened by that which you minister to us this day, to the glory and honor of your holy name. We thank you for the worship team, as they take stage, King of glory, and Anoint them for your purposes, and the Lord let them minister from a place of rest, O God, confident that you are in control, King of glory. And even as the ministry of the word comes, O God, Father and our God, we thank you and we bless you. you shall anoint your servant as he ministers today to the glory and honor of your holy name. We thank you, we bless you, we honor you for another opportunity to gather in this online space, O oh God, and just hear what you have for us. Lord, speak to us because our hearts are open. Our ears are yearning, King of glory, that, Lord, you shall minister to us. We thank you, we bless you, we honor you, we adore you. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. So we welcome the worship team to come and lead us on from here. Amen. Yesu you high Alive is Jehovah Forever he is alive All nations praise him Hallelujah Jesus is alive Alive is Jehovah Alive is Jehovah Alive is Jehovah Forever he is alive All nations praise him Hallelujah, Jesus is alive. Our life is Jehovah. Our life is Jehovah. Forever he is alive. All nations praise him. Hallelujah, Jesus is alive. You hide Jehovah. Yes, who you hide? I Jehovah. You hide Jehovah. I Milele. You hide Milele. Mataifa, your name. Mataifa. Hallelujah. Tumsefu. Yes, 
Yesu you hai Salaba wa Yesu Salaba omenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Salaba wa Yesu Salaba omenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Oh Salaba wa Yesu Salaba omenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Salaba wa Yesu Salaba umenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Oh damu yake Yesu kaibari Hallelujah imenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Salaba wa Yesu Salaba umenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Salaba wa Yesu Salaba umenioko wa dhambi Salaba wa Yesu Salaba umenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Kwa kwa moko si kalibari Hallelujah Kumenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Salaba wa Yesu Salaba umenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Salaba wa Yesu Salaba umenioko wa dhambi Salaba wa Yesu Salaba umenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Nadamu yake Yesu kalibari Hallelujah imenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Salaba wa Yesu Salaba umenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Kwa kwa mokosi Hallelujah umenioko wa dhambi Salaba wa Yesu Salaba umenioko wa dhambi Hallelujah Katikati ya miungu Hakuna mungu kama wewe Mungu kama wewe Katikati ya miungu Hakuna mungu kama wewe Mungu kama wewe Katikati ya miungu Hakuna mungu kama wewe Kama wewe Kati ya miungu Hakuna mungu Kama wewe Mungu kama wewe
There is none like you, none in the heavens, O Jehovah. All the heavens declare that you are risen, O Jehovah. You died on the cross that my sins may be forgiven, O Jesus. And so I say thank you.
worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. You are holy. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. You are holy. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and the angels bow. Worship you now, mighty, mighty, mighty are you, Lord. Lord, you're worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Lord, you are worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Sing the elders, the elders and the angels bow. Worship you now, worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Elders and the angels bow, the redeemed worship you now, worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Praise the Lord and good morning. My name is Pastor Barasa and I want to extend a very warm welcome and a very special one to each one of us, wherever you are joining us from. Uh, today is a special day that the Lord has given us to be able to congregate in his presence. And so you are most welcome, be in the presence of the Lord, feel in the presence of the Lord and be ready so that the Lord may be able to minister to you in a very, very special way and at a personal level. So this morning, we want to thank God that we are here again to be able just to receive from the Lord. It's a special day, a day we want to trust the Lord to be able to speak to us in a very special way. I want to thank my brother, Elder Jeremiah, and the choir for the manner they have lifted our souls this morning. And I believe wherever you are, you are now ready to receive from the Lord. So before we hear from the Lord, please join me in a short word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We thank you for the beauty of this day. We thank you for the gift of life above all the gift of salvation. And now this morning, King of glory, we are presenting our lives and our very being before you in readiness of hearing from you. And we are saying within our hearts, may you talk to us for here we are and we are ready to hear. So minister to us in a special way at a very personal level and at an individual level to each one of us. King of glory, we commit and commend our service and more so the word before you. In Jesus' name we pray and trust. Amen. So beloved, this is another beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord has given us. And the Spirit of the Lord today is leading us to hear from the word of God, especially in an area that the Lord has been ministering to my heart, and I believe he has also been ministering to you, an area of our calling that is very, very key, and which I'm titling this morning as a walk of remembrance. You and me appreciate that Christianity is a walk of faith. And I want to further say that even as we do so, the Spirit of the Lord is asking us and calling unto the church also to appreciate that Christianity is a work of remembrance, especially this time that we are in. This is an area the Spirit of the Lord is requiring of you and me to appreciate from the in-depth of our calling and from our heart. And I want you just to be ready and open up yourself, ready to hear what the Lord has for us in this area. And so appreciating that Christianity is a work of remembrance. 
When we talk about remembrance, it can be opened up to various people in various ways. Some will say, ensuring that you are reminded, ensuring that you are reflecting, not losing sight, uh, not forgetting. And so it can come to us in very different, with very different revelation, depending on how ready you are to hear from the Lord. But it's a very critical component of our calling, especially this time when the church is really trusting the Lord to come in a very special way. So appreciating that Christianity is a work of remembrance becomes very, very critical to us. What is it that we are supposed to be remembering? Beloved, we want to appreciate the fact that indeed the Lord has called us and our calling is built on the platform of being able to walk in remembrance every day of our life and every minute of our walk. What do we need to remember, beloved? There are many things that we have to remember. Remembering what the Lord has done for us. Today, the strategy of the enemy is to ensure that you and me, as children of God, don't walk a walk of remembrance. The enemy focuses to ensuring that you and me focuses on what we are seeing, on the senses that we have, that we focus on what we are hearing, we focus on what we are feeling, and then quickly we are caught up in a situation where we find ourselves in a bunch of people that are purely in a group of lamentation. So finding ourselves there for lamenting, crying, feeding into how things are hard, lamenting how things are not working, finding ourselves in a situation where our faith is pulled down, that no longer we can be able to remember who God is in our life. So today, the Spirit of God is asking, if only my people can be able to hold on to the knowledge that this work is a work of remembrance and not to allow the enemy be able to pull us down by causing us to forget the calling that we have been called, to forget the favor that the Lord has given us, to forget the purpose of our calling. And so, beloved, this is a very special moment that the church, you as a child of God, you are being called and reminded of the fact that this calling that you and me are in at such a time as this is a call of remembrance. So I want you to join me as we lay the platform and the foundation of this basis. Join me to be able to go to one of critical area of our remembrance, and this is in the word of God. So today we'll briefly just read from the word of God in Psalms chapter 103 and verse 2. And we'll also be reading Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. I want to beg to start from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 1 to 2. Moses to the children of Israel reminded them around the beauty of knowing that they are in a walk of remembrance. They are in the ministry of remembrance. And so Moses said, verse 1, be careful to follow every command I've given you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised to, on earth to your forefathers. And then he says, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you and to, in order to know what is in your heart. Moses was reminding, was in the deeper ministry of remembrance, reminding the children of Israel that there is one area of our calling which is hardly given attention, and this is the area of a work of remembrance. And so he was reminding the children of Israel to remember how the Lord, their God, led them in the way of the desert for 40 years. The Israel were caught up in a situation where they are quickly forgetting what the Lord had done for them. And that is normally the strategy of the enemy to you and me even today that we find ourselves quickly remembering who God is to us, the calling that the Lord has bestowed upon us, the Lord having put us in the kingdom, in his kingdom at such a time as this, 
the beauty of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the many great things that the Lord has done for us. The enemy's strategy is to focus on the fact that we should be able to forget. And when we do so, our faith is lowered down. And therefore, we cannot be able to forge ahead. We see Moses reminding the children of Israel that remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert for 40 years. And today, this is the same message that the Spirit of the Lord is ministering to us. You and me to remember that this is a call and a walk of remembrance. Lest we remember, lest we forget what the Lord has done for us. Lest we forget the goodness of the Lord. I want also to invite you to join me and read Psalms 103 and verse 2. The Bible says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. A walk of remembrance. Beloved, if there is a ministry the Spirit of the Lord is asking of us to enroll, it's the ministry of remembrance, in the walk of remembrance. The psalmist we can see here lifting up his soul and saying, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. This is a beautiful time, beloved, that the church need to, to appreciate the fact that this is a walk of remembrance. Every time having to reflect back, every time having to not lose sight of our calling and who God is, every time focusing on where the Lord has taken us, every time focusing on the goodness of the Lord, what are the things we need to be remembering? First and foremost, remember where the Lord has picked each one of us from. Remembering the goodness of the Lord, remembering the calling and the expectations of the call. The enemy will want to ensure that you don't be able to remember and appreciate the expectation of the call. But we see men of God building on this. Moses telling the children of Israel not to forget and to keep remembering how the Lord walked with them for 40 years to test them and to ensure he's able to appreciate what is in their hearts. The children of Israel were quickly forgetting, just like you and me today, in the midst of the challenges that the church is going through and the nation is going through and the people of God are going through. The enemy has strategized in a manner that you and me, we are quickly finding ourselves in a position of not remembering that we are in a walk of remembrance, in a position of not remembering that our God is able, in a position of not remembering the goodness of our God, in a position of not remembering the promises of our God. And this, is giving a win to the enemy of our walk. No wonder the church has slumbered. No wonder the church is finding itself in a situation where it is now becoming almost like just a religion. But you are being called unto to remember that this Christianity is a work of remembrance. Remembering what God is to you and me. Remembering the work, on the, the, the work that was done on the cross. And you and me can be able to sit back and say, for sure, if I can only be able to be, a mini, to be in the ministry of remembering to myself as a daily walk, as a daily food to me and to my brother, then we can be able to hold on unto the Lord. And that's why we see the psalmist says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefit, beloved. And indeed, when we position ourselves in soberness, we need to be able to tell our soul to praise the Lord and for, make sure that we don't forget his benefits because that is the secret of the work. That is what lifts up our faith. That's what causes us to see tomorrow. That's what can make us even to be able to remain positive in the midst of a very challenging situation. Lest we find ourselves joining the bad wagon of lamentation, of complaining, of finding ourselves trying to come up with a solution by our own doing. But the Spirit of the Lord is telling us, beloved, this morning, that let us come out of the self-nature and come out of our senses, because that is the strategy of the enemy. The moment we find ourselves in the strategy, in the hands of the enemy, he'll cause you to think that things that the Lord does not do it again. Our Lord did it for you yesterday. 
today, and he'll do it for you today, and he'll do it for you tomorrow. Only if you can remember how he walked with you in the past. Only where, if you can remember where he got you from. Some of us, he got us from the trenches. But today we can stand and say, if, oh, if Christianity indeed is the best life to live. And so only if you can remember how God has been good to you, only if you can remember the benefits of the call, and that's why the psalmist remembered, they appreciated that this is a work of remembrance. He quickly could tell his soul and say, uh, uh, and say, praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Beloved, you and me, we are a product of the benefits of the Lord on everyday basis. The enemy would want us to forget, find ourselves in a state of forgetfulness, find ourselves in a state of self-nature, find ourselves in a state of uh, our, our senses. But uh, this work is a work of faith, and faith is built on the basis of remembering that this work is equally a work of remember remembrance. And so you are able to always reflect on the benefits of the Lord. Looking back and saying, surely God has been good. If I look back, I cannot tell it all. The many things he has done for me. He has remained faithful to his word. Every time he has provided for me. He has made me what I am. So beloved, I want to ask you, in your, in your very presence as you sit over there, take time to remember the benefits of the Lord. Lest you lose sight of what God has done for you. Lest you lose sight where God has taken you from. Lest you lose sight of the goodness of the Lord. Today the church is caught up in a very delicate situation. And if there is a word the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you and me, is that let you and me remember that this work is a work of remembrance. Every time reflecting back, every time not forgetting, every time focusing back. No wonder the psalmist says, forget not all his benefits. And you and me, honestly, if we start counting the benefits of the Lord, it can take several days because the benefits of the Lord and the benefits of the calling are so, so unique in our life. We are witnesses of what God is able to do. We are witnesses of how God can be able to work with us. So I know it is a challenging time for the church and the nation and the people of God. But I want to remind you that there is one critical component. Remember that th this is a work of remembrance. Keep remembering, keep reflecting, keep focusing, keep ensuring that you don't forget. Because the moment you forget, you find yourself struggling. You find yourself putting in your own energy. You find yourself getting frustrated. You find yourself being weighed down because the enemy has stolen from you the appreciation that Christianity is a work of remembrance. The psalmist discovered this. And he had to hold on to the fact of telling his soul every time, uh, telling his soul every time to praise the Lord and to forget not his benefit. Many areas in the Bible we've been called upon to be able to remember. So you and me, the secret, my brother, even in this very challenging time, is for you to be able to remember what God and who he is to you. Remember the beauty of the calling. Remember the expectation of the calling. Remember what God did for you the other day. That at one time you were walking through very, the valleys, you were walking through very challenging moments, but the Lord came. That you are a situation where you have found yourself, you don't know what the future holds, but the Lord has always come. Today, some of us, we are a product of God's doing. That when we thought we were nothing, God has made us to be something. Remember the benefits of the Lord. That is your holding point at such a time as this. Even when there is every kind of rumor, every kind of demonstration that things are hard, you and me can stand confidently and hold unto the Lord, remembering his benefit, looking back to what he has done for us, looking back at the expectation of the call, focusing on who he is. And such a time as this, the children of God, they need to lift up their faith that they can still be able to be the source of encouragement. They can still be able to be the, the basis of the ministry, even the ministry of remembering, persuading yourself every day to remember what God has done for you. Because the moment you forget, the enemy takes over. And so every moment, reflect back. 
Reflect on the goodness of the Lord. Reflect on the mercies of the Lord. Reflect on the love of God. Reflect on who God is. How far he has walked with you. What he has done for you. That is the beauty of pinching back into your mind. Allowing your mind to be able to look back on who he is. And as you do so, your faith is lifted up. That you can be able to forge further in the work. That you can be able to move on in the work. That you can be able to hold on even in the midst of challenging things. That you can come out of the self senses and remain focused in the calling. So this is a walk of remembrance, beloved. Christianity is a walk of remembrance, just the way it is a walk of faith. And that's something I want you and me to hold on today, even in these very unique times. Our God is good. Our God is able. He has remained faithful even to his covenant. And you can hold on that. In Psalms 89 and verse 34, he says, my covenant I'll not violate it. And neither will my faithfulness be led to fail off. It will hold. It will remain. And his promises are yes and amen. So, beloved, how do we provoke the remembrance expected of us. There are various areas that we can be able to hold on. As I started, I said, join me to go to one of those platforms of being able to remember and being able to walk a walk of remembrance. And this is in the word of God. Every time enrolling in the word of God, allowing the word of God to dwell in you more richly, as the word says in Colossians 3.16, this word is the source of you remembering. As you read, as you read, you have communion with the Lord, and it allows you to remember who God is. It allows you to reflect on the promises of the Lord. Which other way can we be able to provoke remembrance in the work? It's through praise and worship. Worship. And that's why we see David in Psalm 103 saying, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And so you are able to prov uh, invoke and provoke remembrance through uh, uh, encumbering yourself and clothing yourself with a garment of praise, the garment of worship. This is the beautiful time the church and the children of God need to focus and build themselves into worship. That lifts the heart of God. That touches the heart of God. That lifts our heart so that you are able to every time you go before the Lord and sing his praises and praise him and say who he is, how good he is, how wonderful he is. And every time you go before the presence of the Lord and worship him, beautifully being able to worship him in the deepest of your heart, that is is a basis of our remembrance. When you do so, then you are able to remember that our God is able, that our God will do it, that he did for us yesterday, he will do it for us today, and he'll do it as for us tomorrow. So praise and worship brings us on the path of walking, a walk of remembrance. It makes us to be able to praise he who is above, he who has saved us, he who has lifted us at such a time as this. So that is a beautiful area of being able to walk on the path of uh, a walk of remembrance. Another area, of course, is prayer. Going before the presence of the Lord in communion, in prayer, having fellowship with him, speaking his word back to him. When you do so, that is a walk of remembrance. So beloved, in a brief, Christianity is a work of remembrance. And this is what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Let the church know that this is a great time, a time that they need to go back to the path and the work of remembrance. So, beloved, you are there just like any other person in this country, caught up in a very delicate situation, finding yourself in a situation where you have no option but finding yourself also joining the bag war on and find yourself lamenting, find yourself crying, find yourself in a delicate situation, I want to invite you to come back to the work of remembrance, being your calling, being Christianity, being what it means to be a child of God in the kingdom of God at such a time as this. And so another critical area of our work and the work of remembrance is the area of communion with the Lord even through the Holy Communion. And this is an area we thank God, it is not normally a ritual. It's an area of provoking the work of remembrance, the work of focus, that when we are able to partake of the Lord's table, 
This is one way of remembering. The Bible says, do so as often as you remember me. And so it's a unique area that every month as we normally have the first Sunday, to be able to come before the presence of the Lord and even be able to fellowship of the Lord's table. So this is a very vital area, an area of being able to commune with the Lord as a manner of work in the presence of the Lord and the work of remembrance. And so we want to prepare ourselves, beloved, again, this is another beautiful day that the Lord has given us to be able again to join in this work of remembrance, even through partaking of the Lord's table. And so I want to assume that as you are there in your presence, you are preparing your heart in readiness to remember that this is one of the call of remembrance that the Lord gave to his disciples, that they may do so in remembrance of him. Let's turn to the word of God quickly in Luke chapter 22 and verse 19. Luke chapter 22 and verse 19. So I want you to quickly start preparing your heart in readiness of this special moment of work, special component of our work with the Lord and a work of remembrance, even partaking of the Lord's table. And this is a very special way the Lord commanded his disciples to be able to do. He says, do it as often as you remember me. The word, the word of God in Luke chapter 22 and the verse uh, 19, we could also read briefly, verse 14. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. Let me jump to verse 19. And so the beauty here is about reclining at the table when the hour had come. I want to invite you in the presence of your house altars to prepare yourself to recline the table. As we do so, we will be undertaking a very critical walk with the Lord, even a walk of remembrance. Verse 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is one way of remembering the Lord. And that's why in this work and in this call, we do so frequently. Today, I want to invite you that you may be able to join us and be able to partake of the Lord's table. And as you do so, it is not a ritual. It's an area of ministry, the ministry of remembering the Lord. The Lord commanded us that we may do so, even as a manner of remembrance of him. And in 20, he says in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured for you. Again, an area of covenant an area of remembrance, an area of partaking. So beloved, I want now quickly to be able to ask you, uh, wherever you are, to prepare that emblem that you have, that piece of bread, that piece of chapati, that that the Lord has led you to prepare, and virtually we want to join together and be able to partake of the Lord's table. What a beautiful moment that today we can be able to do so in remembrance of him, do so in appreciation that Christianity is a call of remembrance, that Christianity is a work of remembrance, that Christianity is a ministry of remembrance. So today, let your heart be ready, let your heart be prepared, let your heart be able to reflect back in readiness to partake of the Lord's table. The Bible says, inclining, re reclined at the table. When the hour had come, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, a table that they were able to fellowship over a meal. And after that, he said, do so in remembrance of me. So beloved child of God, today, as you sit in the altar of your houses, or even for some of us who are joining to the, in the sanctuary right here, I want to invite you to prepare your heart in readiness of partaking of the Lord's table. And today I want you to do so with a new way of appreciation of what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. That Christianity is a work of remembering. That we are doing a very special call, even a call of us having to remember the Lord. Remembering what he did for us. Remembering the dying on the cross for your sake and for my sake. Remembering how his body was coached 
for the sake of you and me today, remembering how the blood that he had to shed for the sake of you today. Today, I want to ask you to go through a special moment of remembering, a special moment of reflecting, a special moment of uh, putting sight on this, a special moment of not forgetting who he is. And today, you could have been there, and you have quite often been partaking the Lord's table just as a ritual. I want to say, no, this is a special moment of covenant. This is a special moment of ministry even the ministry of remembrance that we are going to do so even as we remember what the Lord did for us at the cross how the Lord went through all that he went through for the sake of you and me so I hope you are ready and you are taking a minute just to pray and ask the Lord to open up your heart. Ask the Spirit of the Lord to minister to you. Ask the Spirit of the Lord to come and be able to indwell in you in readiness of partaking the Lord's table. So as a ministry, every month, every first week of the month, we have this opportunity to do, come before the Lord and uh, celebrate his table, partake of his table, be able to remember him through this manner. And as we do so, it becomes the culmination of our service with thanksgiving, with appreciation, with focus on the fact that this is a work of remembrance. Praise the Lord. So, beloved, I want to invite you now to prepare yourself. Prepare the emblem that you have. And I want to invite the brethren that uh, I am with here to come over so that we are able to partake of the Lord's table. So as we prepare ourselves to do so, just keep in prayer, keep in prayer, keep lifting up your faith before the Lord, because this is a special moment for us to remember what God did for us. And so it's a very, very special moment. The Bible says that in verse 19, he took the bread he took the bread, and after giving thanks, uh, thanking God, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. I want to invite my brethren to come over. So let's thank God for the bread. Father, we thank you for this bread that represents your body that had to go through all the scourging for the sake of our sins and the sins of man. Today, as we prepare ourselves to partake of the same, we want to lift our hearts before you that will bring special moment of our fellowship and our remembrance of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible also says, and he took a cup. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Let's thank God for the cup. I want to invite Elder, to thank God for the cup. And welcome now. So I hope you are getting ready over there. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of God to gather together, Father, to partake of the uh, Lord's table. We pray that you may bless and sanctify this cup as we partake of it this day, the glory and honor of your holy name. Bless you, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so allow me to wait on you as you also do so in your altars. I will be able to have my brothers and my sister here to be able to partake of this. They will wait for us to be able also to have a cup. And so, I want now to invite you, if you are ready, wherever you are in your house, to take the bread together as we do so.
Let's now take the cup together with thanksgiving. Our Father, we thank you for having given us this opportunity even to partake of your table. It's a special opportunity and we give the glory, the honor, and the praise to you. Thank you for the beautiful word that you have heard for us. We pray that let this word be able to dwell in our hearts every day, that we'll be able to remember that this is a work of remembrance, and that we'll be able to reflect back every time of who you are and the calling. Father, I thank you for my brethren. May you bless them even as they walk throughout the week that is coming and the many days ahead of them. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray and trust. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week. And the favor of the Lord go ahead of you every day. Amen.